yes, the Lamborghini Aventador S is different than the original Aventador. Yes, it's more modern. Yes, it has more technology, but is it actually a better car? That's what we're gonna find out in this review. Now to start off with, the Aventador S is powered by the same 6.5 liter naturally aspirated V12 engine as in the original Aventador, but here it's been tuned to produce 740 horsepower at 8,400 RPM, which is 40 more than the previous Aventador, which topped out right around 700. It also puts out 507 pound-feet torque, which I believe is also more than the first Aventador, and that engine is paired with a seven-speed ISR robotic transmission. A lot of people complained about the transmission in the original Aventador since it wasn't a dual clutch. It couldn't shift as fast as say the Huracan could and it really couldn't handle all the power that that V12 produced. Lamborghini says the new one can shift in as little as 50 milliseconds but I suspect it's still not quite as good as a dual clutch would be. And finally Lamborghini says they've upgraded the titanium exhaust system to be a little bit lighter and if you look in back the tip has actually been redesigned a little bit. It looks a lot better in my opinion and of course with that V12 engine it sounds pretty good too. Now Lamborghini does say that one bank of cylinders can shut off when you're idling and you don't need all that power just to improve fuel economy a little bit, but I guarantee you, you're not worried about fuel economy if you're getting an Aventador. Pretty much every piece of the Aventador S is available in carbon fiber. Unfortunately, whoever spec this car made a big mistake and did not opt for that. So it's all kind of this ugly black plastic. And I understand carbon fiber costs a lot more, but since there's such a large amount of this black plastic, I think the carbon fiber is definitely worth it in some places. Something else you can spec on the car, which is maybe a little bit more outrageous if you ask me, like everything else Lamborghini offers, is that you can spec the actual suspension springs to one of three different colors. The problem is, even if you leave the front end lift up, like the guy who parked this car, you can't tell what color they are just from looking at it. You kind of have to poke around under the wheel well to even tell. So it's a little bit ridiculous that you would opt for something like that, but uh, it is pretty cool that they offer that level of customizability. Now moving on to the side of the car, obviously you've got those gorgeous wedge-shaped Lamborghini proportions, standard 20-inch rims up front, and then finally in the rear of the car you've got an electronically adjustable spoiler, those LED taillights that are very similar to the original Aventador, and that hexagonal tailpipe that looks absolutely fantastic. So once inside the interior of the Lamborghini Aventador S, you can see there are a lot of different, very cool features, and we'll get to all those in a minute, I promise. But first, now that we're out of all the traffic noise out there, I'd just like to take a moment to talk about some of the really cool technology the Lamborghini has packed into this car. First of all, obviously, you have the two screens in this car. This one is a TFT digital gauge cluster outlined in carbon fiber. Very, very nice touch there. Also, you've got the smaller infotainment screen there for all the necessities as far as radio go and things like that. But also, you've got four drive modes in this car. You have Strata, Sport, Corsa, and Ego. Ego is basically just the customizable mode where you can go into this infotainment screen and change all the different settings for the suspension and things like that. But probably the most impressive technology that they've added to the Aventador S is the four-wheel steering. So the rear wheels will turn in addition to the front wheels. At low speeds, they'll turn in the opposite direction to make it easier to maneuver the car in parking lots. It is a very wide, low car. So as you can imagine, it's hard to maneuver. And at high speeds, the rear wheels will turn a little bit in the same direction as the front wheels, which really helps you grip the road a lot better and make tighter turns, just improves the overall handling of this car. And it's very, very cool technology. But now let's talk about some of the features in this interior. Obviously with Lamborghini, you're gonna get some really, really nice materials in here. It's available with either leather or Alcantara and a whole host of carbon fiber accents, like I said, outlining the two screens here. It's a really beautiful interior, I'm sure, on camera. But once you get in here, I am around six foot two, six foot three maybe, and you can tell I'm very cramped. I don't know if the seat goes back any farther than this, but this would not be enough space for me to drive. 
my head is about right here. I believe this is the convertible spider version, so you could take the roof off and that would help a little bit. But visibility is nearly non-existent out the front window. And as you can see here, I feel like I'm stuffed into a little kid's toy car. Uh, there's really not enough space for someone who's above average height like I am. But you do have this beautiful Lamborghini flat bottom steering wheel, these gorgeously designed paddle shifters that feel very nice and solid in your hands. Obviously the futuristic infotainment and TFT digital gauge cluster I already mentioned, and a whole host of buttons over here that control things like the air conditioning, the traction control, and of course the sport modes. Now something I'd like to draw your attention to here on the center console is the start stop button because it's actually hidden underneath this little red flap so that it feels kind of like you're starting up a jet when you start the car. And as you heard previously in the exhaust clip, it sounds kind of like a jet too. And then finally, last thing in this interior are these seats. Very cool looking design to them. They're pretty comfortable, but again, um, maybe not the car you'd want to go in for long car trips as they're, they're kind of tight and you don't have a lot of space to move around in them. So, is the new Lamborghini Aventador S better than the original Aventador? Well, as great as the original Aventador was, when you consider all the upgrade technology, performance, and just overall design of the new Aventador S, in my opinion, yes, this is a better car than the original Aventador. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment your thoughts below, and go ahead and check out my channel because I've got a ton of exotic supercar, hypercar, and exotic car reviews up. So, remember to subscribe, and thanks for watching.